Okay, so a quick update here. I'll try to keep this video short and not ramble on too much. All I'm really doing is testing out the um, terrain, basically. I have moved the game outdoors to make it more of a strategy game than, uh, you know, role-playing. But it'll still be very similar, as you can see. It's mostly the same assets and models and everything. Just a brand new terrain. So this terrain was built in Unity using their terrain tools. The textures are all from Substance Database. I just converted them to work with the terrain, which took a little bit of work. I had to import them into Unity and then export them back out, open them in Photoshop, modify the alpha channels, and then bring them back in, and then configure them with the terrain. But it worked pretty well. And um, I just have a few textures just for a little bit of variance. I'm not sure how many I'll keep in the final game. Some people say that there's performance issues if you use more than four, so I need to look and see if that's actually worthwhile. But uh, anyway, for right now, this is fine. And I have a new water asset that I just bought for $5 called Aquas Light. I may get the full version sometime, but um, for right now, this one's pretty good. I just wanted something where the water would change color as it got um, deeper. And that was really all I needed. The default Unity um, water asset wasn't really that great. Anyway, um, I have grass disabled at the moment because it was just too much of a um, performance hog. It was taking the draw calls up, or batches as they refer to it, um, all the way up to about another thousand on top of this, just for that. And um, it didn't seem worth it because, you know, by the time I get multiple characters and objects and scenery in here, the draw calls are going to go up anyway, so I don't really want to waste everything on grass. Besides, it may cause issues, you know, if I enable things to be dropped to the ground, they may be hidden in the grass or whatever. From this high distance, you won't be able to see a whole lot anyway. Okay, so um, I was able to generate a um, nav mesh on this, just like I was before, so I can keep using the same point-and-click um, style navigation. I may change the camera, though. I did change it a little bit already. Actually, this is a perspective camera versus an orthographic camera for what you've seen in the past. But I, I think it makes it a little bit more three-dimensional where the trees walk... Uh, when you're walking around, the trees kind of move a little bit more 3D-like. And uh, I just didn't think orthographic was really doing it any favors anymore. Plus, I might um, change it so there's not a follow camera. Like right now, you walk and the camera moves. But um, I might make it so it's just a typical RTS camera where you can just, you know, move it yourself and uh, rotate it around maybe. That way, if you're controlling this character versus that character, it won't be causing any problems. Or if you want to look around, maybe I'll buy a Fog of War asset as well just to make exploration a little bit more interesting. I made the trees uh, fairly tall just um, because... They were interfering with the navigation mesh. The uh, mesh was being created around the entirety of the tree, including the leaves that were anywhere even near the ground. So I made these taller just um, to make it so the navigation mesh is only around the base. Of course, then I found out that um, I could simply lower the height of the navigation character, so I didn't have to do that anyway. So here's a shorter tree in comparison that still works pretty well. You can walk up, up to it and around it and whatnot. This is a very temporary building here. Just something to give an idea of what it might look like in the final game, but I have no idea at this point. But uh, this will give you an idea. You know, just um, destroyed structures after some kind of big war. And this will be all that's left. Here and there is just some destroyed ruins that you can use to store things, maybe find some supplies. And uh, maybe use as a base, have a couple characters defending it, perhaps. And uh, also, it'll be a nice defensive structure. Like if you're out here in the open, you won't have any defensive bonuses. But if you're in here, I'll put like a trigger box around this. So when you're standing in it, you get a defense bonus. So you can use it to help uh, defend yourself and make it into a little base sort of thing. Make it, um, you know, a little bit of strategy here and there make it interesting 
and uh, you can have characters standing in there, maybe have an archer on the second floor if there is one, and uh, whatever, I haven't decided yet, but it's going to be mostly combat focused, I'm not going to have a whole lot of building, not a whole lot of setting up new structures like Age Vampires where you build entire buildings, if anything you'll be able to just um, set up like a little tiny camp to store your supplies or whatnot, and um, a place for people to go to or where the enemies might attack you or something like that, just some basic thing. Okay, so anyway, terrain aside, a couple of short updates here. New weapon haven't shown off yet is the flail, so let me switch to that. And um, it took me a little while to get the physics to work on it, to make it look decent, so it's not clipping into his hand or banging into him or something like that. So I used a longer shaft with a short chain, and uh, it works pretty well, I think. Trying a couple animations here just to see it. I think it swings around fairly well. I mean, it's not really super realistic. I mean, that's not even an animation designed for the flail. That's just a, the same old standard animation that I used for the sword. The only difference is using a flail. But anyway, and uh, I'm trying out a following script on this little guy here because I'd like to have the player to have. Um, I don't know, a few characters, maybe three at least, just um, to make it more interesting. So you can have people standing at your base, or maybe you can form a little party to go attack the enemy. Or um, so just so you can have um, the enemy uh, or have the characters um, take different positions. Like like I said in here, you can get a defensive bonus. So if you had a guy standing here firing arrows, and maybe a couple of guys with spears or whatnot charging then, uh, you know, it's a little more interesting just having one character go in, start attacking, and, and that was pretty much all you can do. So, I haven't always decided the details yet, but uh, just trying to get some ideas and see what works and what doesn't work and how hard it's going to be to script everything. So here's a basic follow script. Right now, all I do is press a button and he will follow me in sort of formation. i got a little empty object right here that he will navigate to. And wherever I go, he'll try to keep at that exact spot. Of course, not going to be perfect or anything. I mean, navigation is hardly ever perfect. If you play any games like Skyrim or Fallout, you know that the players or um, followers, companions, even enemies, anybody can get stuck in the scenery or have trouble navigating past objects or... You know, there's like tricky spots where they just can't figure out how to get around, so it'll never be perfect, but um, I think it's decent enough. You know, he'll um, avoid obstacles, walk around things, and I think it works pretty well. And of course, all I have to do is press the key again, and I can leave him there. So I can use that to set up where I want the other characters to be, like... Um, like I said, if you wanted a guy to be in here guarding your supplies, he can get a nice defensive bonus. I'll also make it, of course, so you can just click on him and then click over here or something and tell him to go there. You don't have to drag him around and make him follow you. But um, for right now, I just wanted a basic test. I still have two books to finish, and I keep getting distracted. I've got a book on Unity and a book on AI, so I'll be getting back to those soon. But I just wanted to do these tests just to see... If this would actually work, if I can get it, same mechanics I was using before, only in a outdoor environment, that was really all I was worried about. So this will probably result in a full overhaul of the HUD as well, making it more of a strategy based with the different characters on here. You can click on to select, have them do um, various actions like. Uh, set them to follow, set them to guard, um, you know, whatever. But, um, well, that's it for right now. I just wanted to catch up a little bit and show off a few things here and there. Oh, and um, I'm probably going to leave it so the edges are um, 
and you know cut off like this because um, it's just too much work trying to get an RTS game confined into a level without letting the camera go past and I've seen plenty of games where you can see the edge of the map so I'm not really going to worry about that um, also the water works um, fairly well as you'll notice if I click over here he actually will walk around the water rather than um, go scuba diving in the middle of a deep pool in full armor so at least that's good um, not going to be perfect of course but um, it works pretty well for what I have so far with these basic tests so anyway everything here is probably going to change um, so who knows what it will look like in the end but uh, this will give you a rough idea anyway so that's all for now and I'll see you next time